Coming up, peculiar find. It is. A seat with liquid filled bags. Simple, isn't it? And I become a professional subwoofer installer. Hello and welcome to part five of Project Rottweiler. In this episode, we are going to focus on the interior, which means we are going to start with the rear subframe bushing replacement, because that makes a lot of sense. That is a leftover job from the complete suspension overhaul, and I really didn't want to do that on the four post lift, because it sucks, the ramps are in the way, and right now I have a beautiful, nice bent pack two post lift. So first we're gonna knock that out, and then we're gonna take apart the interior and make it really pretty. Say a quick aloha to my gorgeous E39 M5. It just came back from Poland from Arthur and David. They did a bit of paint work on this car, but can you guess which parts have been painted? Hmm? Only that bit over there, that upper section of the door, that's original paint, that's original paint, and then the front end was repainted. But the paint match is spectacular. You can't tell that anything was done. Oh, and the bottom side skirt was done as well. And I'm happy to announce that I'm gonna partner up with Gian again and make this car cosmetically perfect, just like with Alpina B7. And we are going to PPF the front end, polish the entire car, and just make it cosmetically perfect because the rest of the car is, well, mechanically it's sorted, the interior is good. It just needs to be sorted on the outside. I've been using this car for five years and to see it, well, I mean, just look at it. Just look at the lines and everything. Oof, it's beautiful. Anyway, that's coming up. Now back to Project Rottweil. Oh, almost perfect. The gigolo test. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. While we have the car at this height, we can disconnect the headlight level sensor. Okay, I gotta do the same on the other side. I believe, unlike Alpina, we don't need to remove the exhaust here, but we shall find out. Now we're going to support the subframe by the diff here. Come, my dusty friend. Like that. That'll do it. Now we can remove subframe bolts. Oh my. One out. So a lot of you told me something that I didn't know and that is that the subframe bushings on the E39 Touring wear out quicker than the E39 sedan. I've never done them before because I've never owned a Touring before. This, I don't know. I can see some cracks in the rubber on here, but it doesn't look terrible. All right, it's gonna be fun to be back in. There we go. First, we're gonna mark the position of the bushing. Rear subframe bushing tool. It's specific for the E39 Touring, and I got this one from eBay. Same seller I got the tool for Alpina E65. I'm gonna leave the link in the description because the quality of the tools Really good. And nut on the top. There it is. All things considering, not bad at all. To be honest with you, I didn't feel anything bad in the rear suspension when I was driving the car. But we are overhauling the complete suspension, so we're gonna do this as well. We are going with original bushings. OE and photo ones are currently not available, so original it is. You really don't wanna play here with aftermarket or OEM bushings, because this is not a job that you wanna do twice. And since OE is not available, we have to go with original ones, even though they are very expensive. Fine scotch bright and brake cleaner. Carbon fiber. Uh, I think you mean microfiber. I don't. Assembly aid, assembly lube, you can get this from the dealer as well. Not that expensive. I believe it's just mineral oil because it smells and looks like mineral oil. I'm gonna lube up the bushing as well. And then there are two arrows on the top of the bushing telling you how to install it. And we're just gonna line that up here and you know, with the mark that we put before. Or if you don't put a mark, just make sure you put the marks on the top in 
well, that direction. A cup on the top. That's it. Fully seated. Piece of cheesecake with the right tool. more lower and that's perfect. Now you can get the front bushings out. Done. Brand new bolt and the plate. I'm gonna go support the car in the front and then we can push the subframe all the way back in. All right, the front end of the car is supported. Let's see if we can push the subframe back in place. The torque spec is 163 Newton meters. Lovely. A lot easier than an Alpina, I gotta say. Now I just need to reconnect the headlight level sensors and put back the wheels. Visually, the old bushings actually look good, but I just went for a quick test drive and the difference is immediately evident. The rear end now feels even tighter, even fresher than before, especially when you drive on a bumpy stretch of the road or you hit potholes or whatever, it just feels more composed and it's absorbing them nicely. It just feels like you're driving on a pillow. So definitely glad we did this and uh, we didn't skip this job. So same story as with Alpina, visually these bushings looked good, but when you drive it, you can actually tell the difference between old and new bushings. Now let's start with the interior. The interior of this car is disgusting, like I don't wanna sit in there, disgusting, so we need to clean it thoroughly. We're also going to upgrade the front seats. We're going to install a wonderful Bluetooth solution and we're going to upgrade the exhaust system. No, we've already done that. I mean the sound system. This is the steering wheel that I borrowed from Project Hovde, E39M5, so that needs to go back. I hate the system. Every time I waste time poking for freaking lever spring thing inside. Oh, I did disconnect the battery, by the way. There we go. Let's get the front seats out. There we are, two little covers removed. Is that a pocket knife? It is. Looks like the previous owner was ready for everything except, you know, maintaining the car and changing the oil. How about that? This is, look at that. You can go in combat with this. How many extensions are we talking about here? Does that swing out? Yep, it does. Look at, oh, well, that is a strange find. Now you gotta disconnect the seat belt thing. There's a clip here that we need to unclip. That's unhooked. Let's see if I can remove the headrest first. Yes, I can. Now unhook the main connector. All right, all right, I forgot to, to do that, you know. There's a bolt for the seat belt, but it doesn't matter, we'll do it now. Here's what we have underneath of the seat. Not nasty at all. These are E39 slash E38 comfort seats. And these particular seats are heated and also have the active function, which is often called massaging seats, massaging function. They're essentially two plastic liquid filled bags in the seat bottom and they get pumped every 10 seconds and they kind of stimulate your pelvis, massage your bottom, if you will. And it's nothing spectacular. There's no big wow effect. I believe Mercedes back in the day had a better massaging function, whatever. Uh, but still, on a long journey, and if you're all numb, it is a nice option to have, and I definitely want to keep that. But this driver's seat is <laughs> If you remember, there's a hole here, and we have sparks. Something is messed up with the heating element, so this entire upper section here is bad. The seat is also twisted, but that's an easy fix with the cables. But I was never a fan of these seats. They are very comfortable, but they provide zero support. As you can see, this, the bottom piece is just completely flat. So we are going to upgrade them, as I said. So let me bring out the other seats. Oh yes, E38 
contour seats. One of the best seats the BMW ever made. These are similar seats, except they're not. These are a million times better. E38 contour sport seats, beautiful bolsters all around. They adjust in many different ways. And this upper section here is adjustable as well. So once you tailor it to your desired position, it is a very, very comfortable seat. Took me a while to find them. It's actually really difficult to find these in great color, in good condition. I found them in Baden-Baden, paid 700 euros for them, and I was told they're heated. And as you can see, the condition of the leather is rather decent for the age, but these are pre-facelift seats, which means they have a black connector and facelift seats have a yellow connector. So we're gonna have to do some modifying there. Other than that, these seats never came with the active function. So the plan is to transfer over that function, take it out of the old seats and put it in the new seats. And then the seam here is split ever so slightly. So that needs to be fixed. This cushion here needs to be fixed. And then I'm gonna clean them up and decide if they need to be re-dyed or not. These are otherwise a direct plug and play in E39, the seat rails and all of that. It just bolts into place. So we're gonna take apart the old seats and the new seats and then take the bottom pieces to Felix, who's going to fix the seam and help me retrofit the active function into the contour seats. And then we're gonna have the ultimate E39 Touring seats. Break out the blanket that's normally reserved for Mutsi. There's a clip here. These should just pull out, I believe. Oh, I broke this one. Doesn't matter, I have plenty of buttons. Didn't have to remove the buttons, but whatever. I believe these have clips. Cool. Clips. Let's connect this plug here. There's another one here. It's as far as the cables go. And then this is simply split here. No, this is for the, for the lumbar. T40. Beautiful. Well, that was easy. Let's remove the other cover and see what lies underneath. There you have it. Now you can see active seats, two plastic liquid filled bags. Simple, isn't it? There's like wood embedded into this cushion and that's how the bags are able to push up on the seat. Otherwise, if this was soft, then well, it would absorb the, when this is pumped up. So I think this will need to be transferred over to that seat as well. Ah, excellent. Okay, I just spoke to Felix and the metal frame on the comfort seat is not the same as the frame on the contour seat. That's like sport uh, metal frame, like an E39 M5, and this is just a normal one. So I'm not going to take apart the other two seats until I take all of this to Felix and see if it's even doable, if it's possible to transfer this stuff to that metal frame and then also deal with the wiring. In the meantime, let's see if the letter will clean up. I have a strong cleaner from Color Lock here. Because this seat doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to look good. This car is going to be a workhorse. So whether the letter is perfect or not, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think someone already tried to dye this seat. At least that's what it looks like. Okay, this is not... It's not good. I'll ponder over tonight and see if we're gonna re this seat. Might reach out to Color Lock and see if I can take these seats to them and then they can, you know, re them. That would be nice. <sighs> let's bring, bring it inside mm -hmm. and then let's see. Oh, it smells so beautiful here on the letter. <laughs> so this is the heating element, I believe. Yes. Right? All right, so now I'm gonna put the other one on the table. Now right. let's compare stuff. Now oh, basically you can see um, the sports frame mm -hmm. is basically um, the same. From only there are these, these these wings that hold the the higher cushion. The, yeah. the bolsters yeah. on the side. You yeah. see uh, these here are higher on the side, so you got better uh, holding. So what so do you think here is the best option? So here we have facelift seat with the uh, bladders, and then we have pre-facelift seat. And then the wiring is completely different. This is black connector, this is yellow connector. 
I would say the connectors of the motors should be the same. The same. So these are three, yes. So okay. what I would do is skip the wiring harness here. Just remove it. Remove it, take this one, and then the only thing we have to um, compare is part for for the motor that uh, moves the, the front part here. Mm -hmm. yeah. In, yeah. The, in the back, there's also a motor that uh, makes the, the upper part moving. Okay, I mean, whatever you think is easier. So this is the facelift connector, the yellow plug. And then here we have the pre-facelift connector, the, the black plug. plug. The pins are even different. So this is the contour seat. First problem is this. Some stitching and it's good to go. So yeah, that's, that's an easy fix? That's an easy fix. Here you can see it's... Oh, split. Yeah, it's broken. Because here is a softer part, here's mm -hmm. a harder part. Um, so, so this is something that you can fix as well, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I think you've done it already for me. Yeah, on, on the, the E46. E46 yeah. Yeah, and good. these are the heat mat. Mm. You can see the wiring in here, they, they heat up. Oh, okay, it's it's one part, so... Uh, with that's, the letter, yeah. yeah. And that's the main problem about... Uh, retrofitting. Re retrofitting um, these he, uh, heated seats, mm -hmm. because if you got an aftermarket one, you only got it in the middle. You don't yeah. get it on the sides. So you don't get it on the sides. So that's that's the problem with your um, X5, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. If you would retrofit any, you only had the middle part. And even they have it here, I think. No? Yeah. Or this part. Yeah, it should be. Because there's some, wiring some cables, there. Yeah. yeah. So even mm. this part is heated. So the next problem is this. Yeah, this is the normal backside because normal you don't backside. get the counter seat with the active function mm -hmm. where it goes up and down. The idea behind this is you stay longer awake on a long journey. This. Some people say it's like a massage function, as a massage. But it's not massage. No, no, yeah. it's, a, it's no massage. It's just stuck to um, you. This is going to be an interesting one. I think this, this is, is like a piece of wood or something. Yeah, it's some kind yeah, of wood. Yeah, it is wood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do we do this? Do we just cut it out? Cut it out mm -hmm. and then make uh, the, the strip here in the middle. Because this is and essentially the same height as this, they they just embedded it into the foam. Mm -hmm. So you would have to make a recess here, as well as on the front. Yes, you can even see this part here. So you got some points to measurement. Yeah. Okay, that's an interesting project, though. <laughs> yeah, is it? <laughs> they even even have the same holes here. Look at that. So that's that part figured out. Next are so the metal frames. These are the plastic bladders. Yes. The bags. Yes. These springs are different. Mm -hmm. These springs uh, here are flat, uh, kind yeah. of flat, and these going down a little bit, yeah, so they have a curvature for these for these bags. So this needs to be transferred over over yes. there. So we begin by cutting the the hooks. So that's the stitching. Yes, here's the stitching broken, and simply put it under the sweeping machine. Right? Yeah, and yeah. Restage it. Now we need some fire to erase the old... To burn the old thread. Yes. Now this one... Ah, fixed! It doesn't come apart. <laughs> that was nice and easy. <laughs> nice job, man. <laughs> Alright, we have a plan. So I'm gonna leave everything here with Felix, so he can fix uh, this and then I'm gonna take the cushions with the letter to color lock to get that re-dyed and in the meantime he can deal with the metal frame and I don't know do some magic I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay well Felix is finishing the seats we're gonna continue with the interior we need to do some work on this door here namely replace the broken window shades and also replace the door actuator I've noticed well, now it's not doing it, but this lock here is a bit slower. It usually takes about two seconds to lock, and this one is much quicker. It's two seconds behind the other locks, which means that the door actuator is dying. And you don't want that thing to die, because if it dies in the stuck position, you can't open the doors, and you have to remove the door panel with the doors closed. And I've done that once on the E38. It wasn't fun. So we're gonna replace that preventively. Let's remove the door panel. We're also going to replace the wood trim. So I'm gonna get that off now. That's how that goes. That's the broken shade. Good. That's the door panel off. As you can see, someone was already in here. The easiest will be to simply unbolt the, the lock.
that's the door actuator. So look at this. It should just pop out like that. Here's the new OE one from Continental slash video. You gotta make sure to engage this tab here with this lock, otherwise it'll not work properly. All right, make sure everything is clipped in properly. Turn the plug. Clip in the door handle. Working as it should. Now you're gonna clean up all of this and put back the vapor barrier. There's glue residue here that we need to remove. Liquid Molly orange cleaner. Hopefully we can get it out. That thankfully cleaned up. That's the initial layer of butyl removed that had dust and dirt all over it. And now we can put a fresh layer on here. I'm gonna go grab fresh butyl. very important to reinstall this properly otherwise you're gonna have moisture in the car since the vapor barrier wasn't installed properly moisture got to the bottom part of the door panel and kind of ruined it made it really soft so i'm gonna try and find a replacement one that's gray and that has the slot for the shades here for now we're gonna run this one but i am going to replace this door panel need to remove glue here as well here's the replacement window shade used in good condition Works just fine. Now I need to replace the clips. Only one broken clip. Now you can put back the door panel. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna get the small one. This one is broken as well as you can see. These are surprisingly not that difficult to find for the touring. For the sedan, they are quite tricky to find. This should clip into place. Beautiful. And now we have fully functional window shades all around. On the other side, they are actually in good condition. Chef! with that. Now we're gonna replace the fuel pump as part of preventive maintenance. All right, we gotta pry on the plastic here. There we are. And then we have a hex bolt. Well, there you go. Now pull up. Oh, it's beautifully disgusting in here. Seat bottom out. Yeah, don't think that seat was ever out. It is properly disgusting in here. Can't remember how much fuel we have in the tank. Hopefully it's not full. Remove the clamp. A little bit of fuel. Oh no, the fuel tank is full. All right, all right. Now I gotta go grab clean gloves. Now I need to extract the old pump. That's the strainer. Let's first remove the connectors. And now we just need to extract the pump. You need at least four hands. Ah, there we go. Okay, that's the old 
I believe, original fuel pump, although there's no date on it. And here's the brand new OE one from Peberg, which is made by TI Automotive. Now it says TI Fluid System, made in France. Fortunately, it doesn't come with a brand new strainer, but this one looks good. Just gonna clean it and put it back together. So I'm actually gonna put this, this was there originally. That way it clamps on the hose evenly. Minus, and then plus. Brand new gasket. Now I'm gonna clean the strainer. That went exactly like that. Make sure it's fully seated. And we can reinstall the fuel pump, rather simple. That. You gotta make sure that the fuel pump assembly clips properly into place. There are two tabs on the sides. Gasket has to be seated properly as well, otherwise it leaks. Yep, that's good. Push it home. All right, so I lined up the marks here. Now you're gonna start the car, make sure the pump works and we have no leaks. Cycle the key a couple of times. You can hear it. No leaks. Excellent. The old fuel pump, I'm not going to throw away because it is a working fuel pump. So I'm gonna save it as a backup. And now the ultimate Bluetooth solution for this generation of BMWs, Blue Bus. Ted, the creator of this beautiful little device, provided me this thing to test it on Project Rottweil. And I'm personally not a big fan of the aftermarket Android whatever units. I tried them in the past, always had some issues. So I wanna retain the original navigation and system that's in the car, just add Bluetooth functionality to it. So let's install this thing and see how it works. So we need to find a CD charger in the trunk. There it is. And then we need to unhook the cables from the bottom of it and plug in the device. It's unplugged. We need to remove this cover here in order to find the blue plug. This thing is so freaking loud. Another clip here and another one here. We'll need to remove this as well, of course. This is actually not going to go back in the car later. We are doing a little upgrade here as well. This as well. Oh, there we are. Now, oh, where is our blue connector, man? This is the plug, ouch. This is the phone control unit, something, I don't know, made by Simmons. Anyway, let's plug in this here. And then this goes here, that goes there. I believe that should be it. All right, let's check if it works. Oh, Bluetooth, there it is, it's alive. So if we go into settings, devices, pairing on, there it is, blue bus. Pair, yes, there we are. Pixel 7 Pro. Play some music. It works! Dun, 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 dun. All right, that was super, super simple. And we can also change how to play. We'll leave that on. Oh, you can do party mode and it's gonna tell you the name of the song on the top. I actually watched Ryan's from E39 Source video Regarding the blue bus, he made a really nice video explaining everything, how it works, and it just saves me a bit of time figuring out everything on my own. So we're gonna leave party mode there. Calling, hands-free on, cool. Now this is the party trick. You can actually change some settings that otherwise you wouldn't be able to do on the E39. For example, lock. This is going to lock all of the locks. Once you start driving, you can set it to 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers per hour. Let's do 20. And then you can also set unlock. When you pull the key out of the lock, it's gonna unlock all of the doors. Or you can do it at position zero or position one. Blinkers, 
that's not a party trick that this thing has. In modern cars, the industry standard is when you just touch the turn signal a bit to the left or to the right, it's gonna blink three times, so it's really easy when you're changing the lanes on the highway. And now you can have that functionality on the E39 as well. Three is the industry standard, but I'm gonna go with five, just like Rand did. I think that's a nice middle, but you can go as high as eight as well. Look. That is brilliant. This is, I mean, this device is phenomenal. Really, really good. And as I said, OEM plus setup. Look, Bluetooth on a 20 year old navigation screen. Actually, this is probably from the 90s. That's when it was developed, late 90s. Ted, my man, thank you so much for developing such an awesome little unit. If you really wanna go into details and learn everything about this, I'm gonna link Ryan's video in the description. He has a really, I think, couple of them actually in his channel explaining everything, how it works. This is just a quick overview of how everything works and this is pretty darn cool, man. Mike probably can't pick this up. But the sound system in this car is garbage. It's one of the worst sound systems being ever put in a stock car. This is the lowest tier that this car has from the factory. And now we need to upgrade that as well. I said in the previous episode that the sound system on this car is really bad and that I need your help to upgrade it. Many of you reached out and for that, I thank you very much. But one person in particular, Dave from the UK, reached out and told me, hey, I have a business where I'm upgrading sound system on BMWs and I think some other cars. I can hook you up with whatever you need and talk you through the process of, you know, installing all of this. And here we are, he sent me a package, all of these goodies. He told me this is about the best system you can get for the car and not break the bank. Good quality stuff. And he actually wanted to give me all of this for free. And this isn't exactly cheap, so I said nine. I'd much rather support him, so I bought all of this from him. He even wanted to fly out and help me install all of this. So super, super nice guy. I'm gonna leave his info in the description. If you're in the UK and you want this installed, you can go to him and he's gonna do it. Or if you're outside UK and, well, you can buy all of this and do it yourself like I am about to. I know nothing about sound systems and speakers and whatnot. We have a subwoofer here, speakers, cables, connectors. DSP and amplifier. So I'm gonna unpack all of this and then I'm gonna call Dave and he's gonna tell me what we need to do first. Connectors, which are all plug and play, I believe, with the stock connectors on the car. These are the front speakers, I believe, and the little tweeters. Look how tiny it is. This is, I believe, the latest from Ground Zero. A super thin one, well, 10-inch, that we're going to put in the stock subwoofer housing that I have sitting somewhere over there. So these are the front speakers, these are the tweeters. So I'll need to change the connectors. On, if you look on there, mm -hmm. uh, in, in one of those boxes, you should have some speaker wire. Yeah, so that's your speaker wire. All right, perfect. If I if I get stuck somewhere, uh, I'll, I'll drop you. And effect. if there's 10 meters of speaker wire in there as well. Oh, you're a man. You're really so, a good man. Uh, Thank you. All right, good. I'm gonna get to work and uh, hopefully I won't bug you too um, much, but. No, no, you're fine. Just, just drop me a message, whatever. See, told you Dave is a really, really nice guy. So you're gonna start with the front speakers first. I finished the driver's side off camera just so I understand how everything goes together and I can explain it better now. Now we're gonna do the right side. First thing is to remove the door panel. <laughs> gonna remove the wood trim now. Don't need to remove it to remove the door panel, but we are replacing the wood trim and it's easier to remove it now once the, since the door panel is attached to the door. Attach the light. This is the speaker box that we need to remove. And the tweeter here. Off to the table. First we need to remove the old speaker. I need to remove this little board here. So the way this connects, you have this low pass filter that connects directly to the speaker, plus to plus, minus to minus. Then this goes to the crossover box where it says N, you have plus and minus. And then you have this board here. We're gonna chop off these connectors here and they connect that to plus and minus on the inside. And then the tweeter comes here where it says tweeter plus and minus. That's it. Then later on the car, just plug in the connector here and it's good to go. First, we're gonna put this in the box. So I'm gonna use a bit of butyl, wrap it around the low pass filter and then wrap it in some foam and then put it in the box. That way it's not going to rattle. Let's get the wires out. 
and then tuck this into the corner over there like that so that's gonna stay in place it's not gonna move or rattle next the new speaker is a little bit bigger higher than the old one this means it doesn't exactly fit into the box it hits the bottom and then it's sticking out ever so slightly to jump over that obstacle we're going to use thick washers these are cylinder head bolts washers from the blown up m3 engine I always keep them around because if you need a good thick washer, this is the one to have. So once we put that underneath of the speaker, it's going to clear the bottom, but then we're going to have a slight gap here, which is no good. So we're going to use some fresh foam. I'm going to cut out the middle here, put it over the speaker. And once we put all of that in, it's going to seal all around. And that way we can install the speaker properly. Put this back in. So I'm going to use a bit of super glue to hold the washers in place. Otherwise the magnet from the speaker is going to pick them up. Look at that professional foam cutter. Connect the speaker. Poke a hole. Then use longer supplied screws. Can trim a little bit that's the speaker installed nice and firm next chop off the connectors the black green one that's the positive one and just the green one that's the negative so get this through the hole here and then we take and put positive cables into the in plus that's the speaker box done for now and then the plus and minus from the tweeters comes in here but that we're gonna do on the car and now the tweeter first we're gonna remove the old one from the bracket so this is the replacement tweeter you can open this up so the way we're gonna do this we're gonna weld or glue this speaker to the bracket because there's no other way that this can fit so I'm gonna use a dremel and hack up this bracket here professional trimmer here and this is how it's gonna go together. Now I'm gonna use a zip tie just to keep it in place. And then I'm gonna use speedy fix to weld it to the bracket. And now speedy fix. And there you go, that's firmly attached to the bracket. I really wanted to have a strong bond here because if this speaker pops out, obviously it's gonna rattle in the corner over there and I don't want that and this is now firmly in place and not going anywhere and it can fit I tried few different setups over there and uh, it can't fit there's not a lot of space so you have to do it essentially like this now we're gonna extend this wiring here for that we're gonna use wires from the old tweeter looks nice and clean doesn't it and now we are ready to install this And here you can see how the tweeter is installed. It looks stock, which was my goal. I can even put the foam thing back in place. Now connect the tweeter to the crossover box. All right, now we can test it. Erdogan of Twitter and schrieb, okay. er wolle die gemeinsamen Themen mit frischem Don't think I can get a copyright on the news. I don't know. Türkei für die But ohnehin schon angespannten Beziehungen both the tweeter and the speaker are working bedeuten, as they should. So this box, I need to figure out where to put it. And now the headliner speakers. <sighs> All right. Go get the new speaker. Let's see if it fits. Ah, oh, it sure does. Sure does, even the holes line up. All right, let's see if that works. All right, it works, it works. Do the other one. Come on. It actually already sounds a lot better than the stock ones. Oh yeah, most excellently. And that's the speaker is done. Now I need to install the DSP and the amp for the new subwoofer. So we need to remove the plastic here and get to the stock module there. There's the stock module. Gonna give it a bit of a clean. Now we have this lovely Macht or Match DSP. I believe it's Macht since it's German. So disconnect 
the stock plug and then we have supplied quad connector plug this into the stock unit then this clips into the stock wiring harness from the car this is the harness for the dsp you can't flip this around over there but so let's grab the amp for the subwoofer we have a connector that connects to the macht line output i think both of these are going to sit something like that there now we're going to run the power for the subwoofer amp we have positive wire here that needs to go from the battery to this fusible link and then from the fusible link to the positive slot on the amp and then we have one negative wire that goes from the negative terminal to the amp first we are going to disconnect the battery pause the cable there we're gonna put the fusible link there alcohol double-sided tape which we are going to apply on the back of the fusible link cut it about there This is going to go through here. That's the positive hooked up. The negative cable is a bit too short. So I'm going to extend it using the red wire here because that one is way too long. I extended the negative wire and that's the negative wire out as well. So now we'll be able to zip tie all of this here. That goes there. All right, I found a way to put the cover back over this and not mess up the wires. So the amp for the sub is gonna go in here. The holes line up with the threads from the chassis, but I am gonna use double-sided sticky tape on the back to kind of absorb vibrations and whatnot. And then the DSP is gonna go right over here with the double-sided sticky tape. This is the ground. The battery is disconnected, by the way. So now we have this cable to connect the DSP with the amp for the subwoofer. We have one more wire, the blue one, that connects from the remote, the blue terminal, to the DSP. Right. Now that connects to the remote out on the DSP. And for that we have a little connector here. Plugs there. We can tidy all this up a bit later. Now it's time for the subwoofer. To install and use our beautiful new subwoofer, we're gonna use the stock Nokia subwoofer box. I did find on eBay a wooden box that someone custom made for the E39. And I bought that thinking it's gonna be easier than to mess around with all of this, but it doesn't fit. In order to fit, you have to disassemble the entire trunk and even then it won't fit. It won't clear the positive cable, the negative cable, the PDC module and whatnot. So I sent that back and instead we're gonna use this. This goes above the battery. This is the bracket there and you can screw it into place and then when you need to access the battery, unscrew it, swivel it out of the way. So you're gonna disassemble this, remove the stock subwoofer and then we need to cut a hole here, mount this subwoofer properly and then get the wiring done as well comes out. There's foam on the side that we need to carefully peel off. This will have to go something like that. This wasn't that expensive by the way, so I'm not afraid to destroy it. So now I'm gonna line this up in the middle like that and I'm gonna get a drill and start the holes. To measure five millimeters from the hole. All right, now I'm gonna fire up the Dremel. After a lot of cutting, we are finally there. Yes, sir. I'm gonna use a file and make all this a bit nicer. Slots right in. So here's what I'm thinking. Self-tapping screws all around, plus silicon. This has to seal really, really well. The hole is ugly, but functional. RTV, I'm sure this is how professionals do it. <sighs> Beautiful. Remove the excess. 
And Rhine's seal is really good, strong stuff, so, so I'm sure it's going to hold. Well, now I need to let this sit overnight and dry. Meantime, we can crack on with the bottom part of the box. You're gonna have to chop up this as well. Actually, not by a lot. Oh, look at that. Fits! With that beautifully executed, you can put back this thing. Now we need to connect the subwoofer and we need to connect it in series. So first, within the box, we need to connect positive to positive, negative to negative, and then two cables from there will go to this connector here. Now I'm gonna chop off the wires from the stock connector and then solder the wires that were provided with the subwoofer because they're a bit thicker. And then on the outside, we can use this connector to plug them in and unplug them if we wanna remove the whole subwoofer and just make the whole thing serviceable. So now we can actually put the box together. Then we can shorten this cable to around there. Perfect. Now you're gonna mark them on the outside. Plus, minus. Good morning. This dried overnight and it looks good. I removed excess RTV and yeah, pretty happy with that. So now you're gonna connect the cables here. Crimp it. This is going to be the plus. Now we are ready to install this in the car. I'm gonna go ahead and order whatever bracket I'm missing here, but this is how it is stocked. So above the battery, then the cover comes here, you don't see it. And if you need to access the battery, you just swing it out of the way. Nice and easy, huh? I just looked up on Real OEM and there's a bracket that comes in here and then this screws into that and then it stays in place. So I placed an order that's gonna come in a couple of days. Let's hook up the wires now. Plus to plus, minus to minus. That should be it. Now we can test it, see if it works. Let's see if it blows up. Yep, that's working. Copyright. Subwoofer is working and all the speakers are working. Now I gotta get on the phone with Dave. He's going to connect remotely and tune the system. Like tuning a car. Okay, so if you put music on, I should have nothing from the subwoofer at all, is that correct? No, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do turn the speakers on one by one. They've just finished tuning the audio system and he is a super nice guy. He guided me through everything. He did video calls with me, explained to me every single detail, even though I was asking stupid and simple questions. So he tuned it with the laptop and it sounds about 15 million times better than before, but the blue bus didn't work and I just talked to Ted as well and fi we figured that out. This uh, 12 pin connector, the white one, um, because of the quad lock, the additional quad lock connector here, I had to remove the aftermarket one and just plug it directly into the unit here. And now the blue bus is working perfectly and I can stream uh, music through Bluetooth. So the quality is really good. And as I said, I'm blown away. This is. I mean, I am not a big audiophile and this is far beyond what I was, what I wanted in the first place. But then Dave explained everything to me and told me, you're gonna love this. It's gonna be really, really good. And you know what? He was right. It's amazing. I need to tidy up all of the wiring, uh, secure it out to the floor, secure the blue bus unit. And once we put the door panels back in and the seats and everything is in place, because right now this is not bolted in. So it's, it's rattling a little bit. But once all of that is done, we can have a proper listen, but for now I can just give you a quick listen. Yeah, the sound is it's beautiful. A ton of bass if you wanted to, but we set it to about, you know, a bit middle where it's not too much and nice and crisp sound from the front speakers and from the one in the in the headliner. This is everything I need and everything I want. So I can highly, highly recommend Dave. I'm gonna leave his email contact in the description and as well, Blue Bus, link to uh, Ted's website. It is the ultimate Bluetooth solution for this car. 
period. You will not find anything better than that. And with that done, we are going to park this episode here. In the next one, we'll continue with the interior refresh and visit color lock and have the front seats professionally redyed. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you very soon.